Okay, today on Totally Yamaha Garage, we're working on a 2011 136 track change. What we're going to do first is pull off the side panels and the hood, and then we will start working on the next step. I just wanted to point out when we get into the suspension, best way to pull this suspension out would be to take out this bolt right here, putting down pressure on it. That'll relieve the, relieve the coupling of the suspension. And then it will easily pull out with the other four, four bolts when we pull those out. Once the side panels and the hood are off, we're going to remove the lowers. There'll be a series of screws here, one in the running board. Then we'll pull the belt off to make it easier for us to rotate the track and do what we need to do back there. Okay, we're going to quickly pull the belt off. I'd recommend locking the parking brake. Pull the belt clip, lift this out. Best way is to take the palms of your hands, push on the helix, and you see the belt drops. Grab it like that, pull it right off. So this is why we're replacing the track. Like a lot of damage and the first thing we're going to do is pull off the secondary clutch so we can get to the stuff underneath put the brake on oh the brake's not good the brake will need to be adjusted Keep track of all the washers and the orientation of the washers. And also when you pull this apart, make sure you pay attention to that washer that was on the back so you don't disrupt your offset. Then what we'll do is we're going to remove the speedo gear, the speedo sensor, and those bolts that hold on that bearing. Okay, I removed the four 12 millimeter nuts to pop the speedo sensor, 14 millimeter to take off the speedo gear, and we'll pull this out and out of the way, and then we'll move to the other side. Now working on the caliper side, I'm gonna remove with a 12 millimeter I'm going to remove the two bolts to hold the caliper on. The ratcheting wrench works really good for this because the quarters are pretty tight. We'll get that removed and bolts out. Then I will take out these two bolts that hold the parking brake on. It looks like somebody replaced these. These are normally an Allen, about a five or four millimeter Allen head. Looks like somebody changed them to a 10 millimeter, so we'll pull that apart and then we'll come right back. As long as I'm at this point, these brakes are worn. You can see one of them is really thin and the other one is mediocre. We're gonna change these pads. Um, what I'm gonna do right now is, as long as I'm at this point, since I pulled the caliper off, you take out this little set screw locker. Then you take out the inside pin Oh, she's tight. Take out this thing here, and that'll release the little clip on it. Pull that right out like that. 
Make sure you put that in the same direction. Little V to the back, smaller V to the front. Pull out each pad. Okay, and then to put the new ones in, we're going to use a C-clamp, just like you would on an automotive, like a car. Uh, take the old pad and collapse the pistons in order to get the new shoes in. So I'm going to use a C-clamp in the old shoe. Push, push the pistons in. You push the fluid back into the reservoir up by the handlebars. Get them down pretty far. Do both sides that way. Get them down as far as you can. And then I'll put the new brake pads on. Insert the two pads from the bottom. Put on the clip. Remember how the clip went. Like that. Insert that through, push down on the clip, walk it in. Fairly simple. Just do hand tight on it, it does not have to be torqued. You have a locking set screw on the outside that's going to lock it in. And then what I do is I just take a flat screwdriver on the pads and spread it out so you can get it back over the caliper. And you're back in business. It's fairly simple. It'll push right in. As you can see, it pushes right in. Spread it out just as much to get it over the caliper. And you're all done. Bolt her back on. Okay, I'm going to remove the parking brake. Usually what you got to do is you got to get these, this one out. that you can feel it kind of loosen and then in this one you'll have to reach across and throw the parking brake halfway so you can get the bolt out otherwise it'll it'll come out to the mechanism and it won't allow you to remove it okay now that the caliper is off or the brake caliper make sure you pay attention to the little aluminum spacers that are on the back you don't lose those. I usually set those down by the ski. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our C-clip off and pay attention to the washers. I usually take them off in reverse so I remember how to put them back on. You can go to the microfiche and print off an exploded view of how they go together. But if you just pay attention and stack them down how you pull them off, that's the easiest way to keep track. Okay, we'll remove the clip. Pay attention to the washer. On this model, there's one. I've seen multiple washers in some cases. The spline shaft. That'll go down on the cardboard along with the inside spacer. And it seems to be a little tight. Let me set this down. This hung up a little bit from the gunk. Set that down in the same order it's coming off. Then on here, there is a T15 that we will take out. And I'll have to rotate the shaft. Rotate the shaft down. There we go. And then you can get at it to get that off. Pull it off. Now, normally, and we'll get to that later once we pull the cover, but there is a little small O-ring that sits around here. It rides right in this groove. And if you don't know that O-ring's there, you will lose it. And we'll come to that in a minute once we pull it off. But once we get this off, now you can drain the case 
I'll disconnect the linkage so we can tip the forks to get the cover off and then we'll pull all the bolts off. Okay, I'm going to disconnect this part of the linkage. What you do is use a ratcheting wrench. And as you start to do this, the inside's going to turn. And you can slip a little 8 millimeter wrench in there, which will allow you to ratchet that right off. As soon as that is off, take that, finish that up. I'll finish that up in a minute. Um, I want to get the, the draining going, so 12 millimeter. Underneath the back side of here, about if you if you figured center and you just ran your finger and you felt in the back, there is a 12 millimeter drain plug on the back side. millimeter drain plug get that pan right there and you'll see there's a little copper washer on there and then we can go ahead and I'll finish up the linkage and I'll start pulling the bolts out of the case okay we're gonna start pulling chain case apart you have to take out these two support screws And each of those screws got a little felt washer on them. Then you're going to pull off one, two, three, ten millimeter. I'm going to use that ten. Or I mean twelve millimeter. Sorry, not ten. Twelve millimeter. And then we're going to do a 14. And take off, there's two big bolts that actually hold the case and the cover to the, to the frame or the bulkhead. Get this guy here. those are out and you can slowly feel the cover coming off but now you have to you have to work on the fork over here so after battling with it for a few minutes um, realize that you need both this linkage otherwise you can't pull the cover and then you need this linkage disconnected otherwise you can't pull the shift fork up tall enough to unhook the gear to unhook from the shift gear for the reverse so basically you do the same thing you put the 10 on the back rotating it you know once it loosens up you'll rotate it and then the eight will fall right in Side. And a few more turns on it. Right. Should be able to get to it with your fingers. do is I put the nut right back on the linkage so we don't lose track and now 
as you pull this out, it gets hung up. You can hang on to the linkage. And then it'll get to a certain point and it'll shift down like that. But see, the, the fork came off the, I'll show you in a second here. So what's happening is this fork, when you put it back together, you have to drop it over the cup. And when you're pulling it apart, you have to pull back and the linkage needs to shift far enough that you can come over the top of the cup. And that's how you pull the cover off. Okay, at this point, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the tension off the chain, but there is a few things you need to pay attention to. On this particular place right here, there's an extra washer right here. Make sure that don't fall in the oil pan. And then if you look there, there's a little spring. Do not lose that little spring. Make sure that comes out with the gear. And I will set those on the side in the order they came out. Also up here, you'll see there's our, my little O-ring that I talked about that you need to pay attention to and where it goes. And then there's a spacer and then a torque washer. Put those down. Slid the secondary back on and you need somebody to hold it over there or you can use a, a clutch tool and put it on reverse that holds the secondary. Um, better to have a set of, an extra set of hands. So then I'm going to take this guy off and this is after I broke it loose and took the C-clip off. And then now, here's the spring. Now I can actually bring this back, which I did a little too early. Pull the chain tensioner off. Pull the chain tensioner off. And then, what I'll do is I'll slide these together. Slide these boys together. Usually leave the little guy on there. I can take this guy off in one piece. And I'll set that just like that on my cardboard, keeping it in order. And on here, this would be the bottom. Notice the direction in which it goes on. I'll take this guy off with the washer on the inside. Set that on the side the way it came off. And up here, there's one, one spacer that's gonna come off. We need all this off in order to pull that drive shaft off. So then the next thing I'm gonna do is there's, because I already took out two of the bolts that went through the covers, there's actually two more main bolts that hold the case onto the bulkhead. We're gonna take those off next. Those two bolts and then from there oh actually three bolts missed one down on the bottom that one's a little tight Three bolts. Now the inside case half should come off if it's if it's going to cooperate. At this point, I mean the case is free, but it's not going to come off completely until you relieve some of the drive shaft tension. 
So you're going to have to lower the sled down a little bit. And then usually it'll just pop right off, but I think there's still a little bit too much tr track tension. So I think since, since we got to this point, we need to take the suspension out because we need a little, there's a little bit too much tension on the lower drive shaft because of the track and the suspension still in there. I thought it might collapse enough to slide. Um, so the next point, once this is unbolted, we'll now pull the skid. So this is a three quarter inch bolt. This is the transfer bolt that I need you to pull out. And we just barely need to push down on it. Just a little tiny bit. That's too much, a little, little tiny bit. It should push right out and it's not cooperating right now. Yep, just give it a little tap. Wiggler, okay, and she'll, she'll drop right out. And then that sits right down there. And that will release the coupling. You set the bolt on the side. And then the next thing we'll do is we're gonna pull out the front bowl here with a 17 millimeter. The 17 millimeter on the back. It's only bolted through part way and then 14 on the outside. And well, these look like they've been replaced. They're a little longer than normal, but they do the job. Pull the bolts out. There's a washer on the back, washer on the front, nut on the back goes through one side and then you have to do the other side. Then what you do once you pull the front ones out, then you have to remove these rear wheels. 14 millimeter bolt, put a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench on this side, hold the nut, pull the wheels off, then pull the 14 millimeter cross shaft bolts and then the skid will fall down and you'll be able to slide it right out. These were tight on this one. But basically, I use a ratcheting wrench on one side and a little wrench to fit up in there because you don't have a lot of room. And these wheels have to come off and you have to pay attention to this kind of suspension. These bearings sometimes go very fast. I mean, usually every year you should look at these because they, they spin a lot and they're on independent bearings um, on independent little shafts. So, and you can see on the other side, looks like the bearing might have blown out. Probably due to lack of maintenance. But our job is to replace the track. So once you get that nut off, you gotta kinda work the bolt through. You kinda work it back and forth, it'll come down. And there's basically the wheel and the bearing that has to come out. It's got a little spacer. And those are the bearings. And we'll do the other side. All right, this wheel's off, I'm gonna pull this bolt out. You can see because it's not coupled, the whole skid falls. And it makes it quite a bit easier to get out. So once you have the front bolts, washers, the rear wheel off, so the track swings out of the way, pull this rear bolt out, both sides, the whole skid will fall down. We're going to raise up the sled. Notice, notice how it all falls right out? All because that connecting rod is released. Basically from here, you just lift her right out. Skids right out. Now of course if you have, if you have adjuster, Prior to pulling all those bolts out, you would take and disconnect the adjuster three bolts from the side of the tunnel. This does not have an adjuster on the side of the tunnel, but you take the three bolts and lay the adjuster on the shock so when the, fall, the front falls out, the adjuster will be with the shock. So now that the skid is out, basically it takes all the tension off. You'll need to work this a little bit back and forth 
and then you can push the holes out of the way and then we're gonna that would be the inside case half and it's always good to keep your, keep your area nice and clean we'll, we'll be replacing the lower bearings which we, we're checking the upper bearings these are uh, always in oil. They usually very rarely do they go bad. Uh, we'll put a new bearing and seal down here. Uh, you can see here the drive shaft is loose. And on the other side, now that we have the case off and the tension uh, removed with the suspension out, if you look here, I can actually grab the drive shaft and pull it all the way over. And up on the back side, you can get to the locking set screws. To pull the bearing. And then you just kind of roll the track. And then you take the other set screw out on the other side. Pull it right off. It's a little bit of dicking around. Sometimes you gotta pull the set screws all the way out. Give it just a little bit of a tap. And it's a little more stuck than normal. So I'll use one of the suspension bolts. And then I have a set of forks that I use for doing ball joints that you can set behind there and then just give it a tap if it's tight sometimes she'll pop off. Sometimes you need a bigger hammer. Or sometimes you need a puller. There we go. She popped right off. You can see there. We'll replace the bearing and the set screws. And that's about it for that part. Then you can just take Basically just put the slack in the track. Okay, you gotta whittle the drive shaft over. Sometimes you really have to get the track pushed up out of the way. You need to force it over to the brake caliper side. And she finally comes out. At that point, you basically have track out and you're ready for the next steps we're going to uh, replace this bearing so we got to pull off this little clip right here on the shaft Then we need to pull out these and the whole shaft is going to come out. And then as long as you're in here, I'd recommend uh, vacuuming out the stuff that's kind of been sitting in that race. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a little heat to the inner race, which will expand the inner race and help with us tapping this off. 
then when we do the outside bearing we'll pull that clip and do the same thing we'll put a little heat into the uh, aluminum portion to expand it a little bit and it will definitely pull right off so we'll get that done and get it in set up and then we'll start up again okay before we add heat we're gonna pull the seal out of here this is a bad bearing so you take a little pick get behind the seal pop the seal out then you can get the heat right on the race so get a little heat got a little torch kit should slightly expand that inner race. You gotta be a little more cautious when you're putting your new one on. You heat it from the inside and usually it'll drop right on. That's how tight she is. A little more, she's going. A little more heat on it. You can also use a press if you have one available. It will take some major force to get it out. And just like that, it's off. Okay, got the bearing on the aluminum portion. She's pretty warm, so be very careful. And then I have what's what are, what's called bearing drivers. You can buy them at Harbor Freight. They're great for driving out bearings, putting new bearings in, doing wheels. And you just give her some nice light taps, and she falls right out. Okay, we got the shaft cleaned up. Some Scotch Brite. Got the retainer. And the new bearing's ready to go in. So, use a bearing driver. She goes in a little snug. You can always add a little heat to the outside and it'll drop in even easier. She goes in pretty easy. Take it all the way down so you can get the clip on. Grab onto the clip, get her down in there, grab one side of it, make sure it's in. You can see it's in all the way around, looks good. And from here, what we're going to do is we're going to preheat this. And we're going to preheat the inner race here. you got to be very careful, or you can just use a press. If you're not good with the heat, I'd recommend just using a press driving it on, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna preheat the inside race. Let it expand enough and it'll help us tap that right on. So. Be very careful on, around the seal. And it's not enough heat to really melt the grease. Just enough heat expand that inner race. Enough. And if we're lucky, she dropped right down perfectly. I didn't even have to pound it. And then from there, we can go ahead and uh, change my snap ring pliers to 
the outside versus the inside. And I can put the little clip on and it is completely done. Good to go right back in the machine. You notice if you're careful with the heat and you do it right, it's a piece of cake. There you go. Okay, shaft's all ready to go in. New bearing. Uh, cleaned up this area, vacuumed out all the stuff that was in there. We'll slide that through. Now remember the chain case on the other side is apart. So you don't have to worry about anything on that side. All right, I got the screws here. Get those in there. Just use the impact to just bring it in a little bit. I'm taking, this is 22 foot pounds. to move in there can you hear the click I like to check it a couple times good we're good this is the new um, Ice Ripper XT we're putting on 136. There's arrows uh, basically all over the place on here, but the arrows go forward. That's the direction of rotation. So the best way to put it is slide the track in. We're going to slide the track all the way to the front of the bulkhead. Then we're going to kind of whittle the shaft in there. You got to go to the chain case side, then to the caliper side. Or I mean the chain case side to the clutch side. You got to kind of move it back and forth, get the drivers into the the uh, drive position, and uh, we'll do that. And I'll show you some pictures. We just put the driver in the new track. You got to get that track as far forward and up inside that tunnel. You bring the driver in to the chain case side, move it up, getting these drive cogs into the driver locations. And then you kind of slide it back. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it'll go in, trust me. We're gonna change the uh, bearings in the chain case. I'm gonna basically show you how to do the lower and the upper is basically the same thing. Um, so pull the seal off. Now you can use a flat screwdriver. I like to use a actual bearing or a seal puller pulls it right out just like that flat screwdriver you can use but this is quite a bit easier Harbor Freight pretty cheap tool once you got that side done so we got it flipped over and we're gonna take out the snap ring take that out flip it over like this the right size bearing driver in there at this point it doesn't matter it's a bad bearing but try to get it as big as you can to fit in there let me flip these over tap her out kind of loud and you'll see here she comes right through So from here, we'll clean her up good. Some contact cleaner. Uh, contact cleaner, spray her out a little bit. Make sure all the bearing races are clear and the clip areas are clear. bearing new bearing from Yamaha put that right there 
find a size that fits perfectly over the top. And once again, it's going to be a little loud. I'll take her up here, I think, to the get a good solid base on there. There we go. A little more solid base. It drops right in. And we can bring that back over to the bench. Put the clip back in so you don't forget about it. And then we'll put the seal in on the back. Okay. Snaps right back in. And on the back side, this one here you got to be careful, you want to keep it as straight as possible. So we put that little guy in there like that. Find the right size piece. This one, you're gonna have to be really gentle. Slowly walk it in so it's even. And you want, you want to be just slightly past the radius. You'll see in there, just slightly past the radius. Got the bearings replaced, uh, seals. And uh, what I usually like to do is I like to put a little lube on the back. Put a little lube on the back on both. Uh, a little grease, just a little tiny bit, just, just around the seal. And then we'll start putting her together. All right. And what you do is you slowly get her on. You got to bring the hoses out of the way. Get the top on a little bit. doing this you're kind of fighting the holes yeah once you get her started gotta keep that and you'll hear it hit to the back just like that then put your 12 millimeter bolts that hold it to the case to the bulkhead those in there should be three of them zip those down a little bit with my... just to get them down a little bit Torque them to 31 foot-pounds. Kind of go around. It's cooperating with me today.
get them all done to 31 foot pounds and I'll get on to the next step. Okay, we got this side ready to go. The other side is put in uh, just temporarily with the chain case uh, bolted to the bulkhead. Um, use a, a lot of Yamalube product. This is breaking contact cleaner, works great for cleaning up these areas. Uh, we're gonna put this bearing in. Uh, we have the bearing, the new bearing with the cup on there and the set screws put in. Don't go too far. It may hang up a little bit when you're putting it in. A, usually I'll just tap it in when it gets to that point. <clears throat> yeah, I just tap that in there. Just gonna push up a little bit. Then you put the, the cup on. And it only goes on one way, so yeah, look at what bolts line up like that. Uh, get the nuts. Put the pickup sensor. on there. This is a 12 millimeter on this side. Just bring it down a little bit. And then I'll finish it off at 14 foot pounds. This is my little inch pounds wrench, but I got a preset. I think put our speedo gear back in. And that we're just going to hand tight for now. I will torque this when I come and put the secondary, just before I put the secondary back on. I need the brakes and uh, everything kind of put back together to hold the shaft. Okay, we're going to put the, put the drain plug in the back before we forget. Snuck that up. Just got a washer on it. Wipe down some of the stuff here. Make sure it's nice and clean. All right, then what we're going to do is make sure the seal's on for the case. Then I'm gonna take the spacers Spacer washers, get those cleaned up a little bit. Get the upper spacer washer, upper spacer behind the gear. And this one here, like that. to put on the you know, washer that goes here put on the inner half of the idler gear inner half of the idler gear she's got a shoulder And you got the little spring, goes on there. Make sure that's there like that. And then this goes like that. Now, for now, I'm just showing you how that goes together. 
because it's going to go pretty quick. I'm going to set that down because I'm going to need to float this gear out. Now, as I took this thing apart, I have this. Upper gear, lower gear, all put together. Put it on the top shaft. Bring it in until you can get the bottom shaft started. Push the holes out of the way. And you kind of walk it in and put it over the idler gear like that. And then bring the idler gear and lower gears together at the same time. And you'll feel it, feel it line up on the splines. Like that, just like that. I like to put the chain tensioner on just to kind of give it some tension. You don't have to set it all the way. Let's give it a little bit of a tension, tension for now. now we go ahead and put this little piece back on it we talked about earlier. And watch that spring, make sure that spring goes back in that little groove. And from there, we're gonna get the lower, lower spring cup on. All right, basically right now, you're just gonna kinda hold it. And this is a little bit of a trick. Put a little Loctite on it. You got to push in and then get her started. Okay, like that. And what I like to do is just just tap it in with the impact, just ever so slightly. Just ever so slightly and then we'll set the torque on that we got the bolt just tighten just a little tiny bit put the secondary on and I usually have somebody hold that while I set this torque spec which is 40 foot-pounds perfect okay once that's torqued we're gonna put our little c-clip on there inside there and that prevents it if the head the bolt head would ever pop it's being captured and it will go through the side of the case okay we're gonna go ahead and put on the thrust washer and that is with the uh, it's kind of caved out towards you that goes on then a spacer. Actually, wipe this up a little bit. Spacer on there. <clears throat> and then from there, we're going to go ahead and start putting on the covers. So the cover goes on. <clears throat> and this is a little tricky part. So, to slide this cover on, you have to hang on to the linkage and always make sure this part is flipped up because what happens is you get the cover on and it's flipped down and then you can't swing it by because of the little radiator. So you got to kind of be aware of this and you got to be aware of this. By pulling on this, you're going to keep it above and you get that bad boy on there like this. I'm going to kind of, this is a little tricky part. She's kind of a, a bear. You can see the fork back there. And then the fork will drop. You can almost see that it's going to drop right over the cup. Take a 
look inside there one time. Make sure it's going to drop over the cup. <clears throat> there we go. And when it's when it goes together, it's you'll know it's together because it'll slide right against there. Just like that. And it hooks on there. Got to have a little patience. Trust me, it'll go. Okay, I got the covers on. Um, I just kind of hand threaded in all the bolts. There's two big uh, main bolts, 14 millimeter, that go all the way back to the bulkhead. Then there's uh, three uh, cover bolts that hold the cover on. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through them all and just kind of bring them down till they touch. Slightly tight, tight. And then I'm gonna run the chassis one all the way up. Like that. And then on these little guys, these you gotta be very careful. They recommend 7.2 foot pounds. I have had issues with them easily breaking. They have a little felt washer on them. I kind of bring them in hand tight. Just barely snug with that felt washer. I've never had an issue after that. And I'm and I'm telling you, be very cautious. Do not reef on them. They snap off pretty easily. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and torque the main cover bolts. Okay, we're gonna torque these at 17. Let's go around. Get them all close and then hit them again. Make sure it's good, good and done. And then we're going to do the main, the two big ones uh, that go back through the cover chain case into the bulkhead. Those are going to be at 40. Actually, that's not the torque wrench. There we go. That's actually the, the aluminum. There's a difference. You can feel the difference in the wrench. You can't hear it in the noise, but you can feel the difference in the wrench. Then from there, what we'll do, we're going to slide on. This little O-ring I talked to you about. That's going to slide right on here. Really nice. And it actually rides in this little bevel. So then you bring this guy in. And he'll push that O-ring right where it needs to be. Tighten the set screw. Here. And this is a T15. And this is, this is just the lock set. So you don't... You just... Can't really, they have a torque spec on it, but you can't really torque it because you got to be careful to snap the tip. And you have the brake disc spacer and then the brake disc. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and hook up our linkages. Here. In both spots. And you use a 8 millimeter to hold the back side of the the little tie rod looking joint and use a ratcheting 10 on the other side. We'll, we'll connect both those and we'll come right back. Linkage is all tightened up. I double checked the reverse. Everything was working perfectly. Uh, go ahead and put on the washer, caliper, or rotor I should say. Yeah, I'll make sure. Right on the splines, spacer washer, clip. Make sure it's on there, there we go. She dropped into the groove. And from there we're gonna slide on the brakes. 
And because they're new, I'm going to separate it a little bit. before we drop it on the caliper. Just like that. And it'll drop right on. Once the caliper's on, you're gonna drop these uh, little bolts that go in the back. Kinda get them started with your fingers. When it comes in the back here. those started finger tight and then I finish them off with a ratcheting wrench uh, those do have a spec on them too but it's it's really hard to get a torque wrench in there so you'll have to and from there it should be good so now we're going to put on the parking brake and make sure you put these little spacers on. I came on the back. And you just kind of get that in there. Get that one started. started a little bit and you'll need somebody to just barely apply a little bit of pressure so you can get the, the wrench into the other one These are very delicate too. Usually they're ball end uh, Allens, so you don't really need to crank the crap out of these two. Um, these are probably 7.2 foot pounds. If you're ever trying to adjust your parking brake, this is just for cable slack. You can do a little bit of fine tuning with that, but the best way to do it is to take a, a little tiny, I got a little 730 seconds, you hold the center shaft and you break this, this is a jam nut, you break that loose and then you turn this in and out. Um, I, I can show you how to do it. Just There we go. Break the jam nut loose and then you actually turn the center portion and that pushes the shoe in and out in the center. And that's the best way. And then once you have that set, you check your tension, try to grab onto the clutch and move it. And you can feel it's tight. Then you can jam nut it and lock it down. Okay, now that the chain case is together on the other side, what we're going to do is we're going to come back to this. 29 foot-pounds and set the Speedo gear. Because I couldn't do it with nothing in the chain case before. From there... Uh, we're going to go under, underneath in a few seconds and show you that you need to now, once the, the chain case is together and this is all locked down tight, now you can go underneath, rotate the track, and lock down each set screw on that collar of that bearing. You do the set screws last. You can see underneath, um, we're going to tighten the set screws from the underside. And then we're going to rotate the track and do the other one. So putting the skid back in with the transfer rod disconnected, it was collapsed. You get it inside the skid, take all of the uh, adjustment out of this rear uh, idlers for the track tension because this track could run a little short because it's brand new, so you're, in, you're not going to get it in the same spot. So basically, take our track tension, slide the skid to the back. Get it up underneath the cups, up underneath, and then you get the bolts in on the top. Get the front in first. Sometimes they use a screwdriver on one side to guide it, and then I put the bolt in on the other side. Then from here, I put a little block in the back, 
to keep the arm up and then I'll lower the skid down and then I'll just take a little pry bar and tip the arm forward to get the alignment here. Okay, to align the upper bolts, what I like to do is put this a block in there and you can see we're getting darn close there. There we go. And then you still get them right in. You can see you have to block it and get the arm kick forward and you have to have the transfer rod disconnected and it'll shoot right in. Okay, so I got the rear bolts in, blocking's out. I pick up the transfer rod and have somebody push down on the back of the machine and push down like that right there. Okay, once we got the transfer bolt in, now we're gonna put the idler wheels, there's one on each side. I'll try how to do one side. Basically, idler wheel, you sneak it up in there, push on the track, and just ease the bolt through so we can get the nut on, on here. Not a lot of room in there. And then you take a wrench on this side. Oops. And get her started again. Like I said, there's not a lot of room up in there. Once you get that on, then I take a wrench on this side and a ratcheting wrench on this side and I tighten it up. Okay, here's how to put your belt back on. Put the parking brake on. Put it on the front, arrows forward. Put it on the front, put it here. Palm of your hands on this. Palm of your hands on this uh, helix. I, use, I usually use my fingers. Start walking it on on the bottom. And it'll go right on. But you use your heels or your hands to push and turn the helix. And then you push the slack down like that. And she's on. Release your parking brake. Do not forget to release your parking brake. All right, when the chain case is all done, and I got the track and suspension in, but I like to make sure this is good. I, you know, make sure the slack is good. Bring this finger tight and then back it off a quarter turn and then tighten your jam nut. And you should be solid, you should be all set. I'm gonna run the track now. I wanted to make sure I have, I'm 100% before I add my oil and do my track tension or my chain case tension. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my fill, full funnel in there. And I like to use Yama Lube, I'm putting full synthetic. This is pre-measured and it's pretty darn close. So I usually just put a full one of these in and we're pretty dang, darn close. So just go ahead and dump that in there. Check it with your dipstick and you should be good to go. Okay, the last step, basically I just went through and set the track tension, align the track, make sure it's the same on both sides. Then I jam nutted, tighten the cross shaft. I like to, this is a new track. We're gonna have a little bit of, I like, I like to keep it a little snug until uh, it breaks in. You can see here, it's a little snug. And then up here, what I like to do is I like to just keep that a little gappy. And then if I can push this away with about, you know, 20, 30 pounds of force right at the bend, that'll help the fat high fax wear. So basically this thing's all done, ready to roll. And next thing we're gonna do is basically put the side panels on and she's done.